Hello everybody and welcome to another great Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord has made. So listen, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Glad you tune in tonight for our Wednesday online worship experience. So I want you to do two things for me. The first thing is I want you to make sure that you share some love today. You never know what a good word of kindness can do for somebody who may have had a rough day. So I want you to share love and then I want you to share this live. Make sure that while you are coming in, while you are yet coming in, that you share this live with everybody you're connected to. So click that share button right now before we get started so that everybody you're connected to can be a part of what God is going to do on tonight. I want you to make sure that you would uh, gather yourselves, pray as we pray together. I know that God is going to hear and answer all of our prayers. Let's pray now. God, how we give you glory, how we give you honor and give you all praise for you alone are worthy of all the praise and all the worship. God, we thank you for uh, all that you have done on our behalf, even as of these last three days of this week. God, I pray that God, that even as we have gathered ourselves in the sacred space, God, that whatever may be plaguing our mind, body, and soul, God, that you would remove it even now. God, whatever may be weighing us down, we pray that you would lift it even now. I pray for those who are going through seasons of sickness and disease, I pray that you would heal their hearts, heal their hurt, heal their pain right now, God. I pray for those who have lost loved ones, God. I'm praying for the families that are grieving and going through bereavement in this time. I pray that you would comfort them even now, God. Give them the strength they need to endure and the, and the ability, God, to look up to the hills from which come with their help, knowing all of their help comes from you. God, I pray now that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive all that you have in store for us on this day. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We are continuing our series on the statutes of liberty. As God has given us the blueprint, the plan of how we are to live a free life, mind, body, and soul. We pray that you have already been blessed by what we have experienced and what we are going to experience yet today. If you would please turn with me in your Bibles, grab your smart device, your Bible, grab your pen, your paper, and turn with me uh, to uh, the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Say amen once you have it. Amen. It says these words. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. I want to talk from the subject today, it wasn't me. Somebody ought to just make a declaration. I, I, I would love to take credit, but it wasn't me. As we have gathered ourselves today, uh, many of us, if we be honest, we can attest to the fact that you have taken credit in your life that didn't belong to you. You have, uh, you have prided yourself in something that, if we be honest about it, it really wasn't a result of something you did, but it was the result of something somebody else did on your behalf. And sometimes it becomes hard when people begin to give you accolades and begin to suggest that you are better than they thought you were. It, is, it becomes hard sometimes to uh, remove the credit from you and give it to the one that is due. But all of us have to be a witness that there comes a time in your life 
where you got to give credit where credit is due. And so Paul in Ephesians chapter two, verses eight and nine, uh, has a way of bursting our bubble. Paul has a way of bursting our bubbles because in Ephesians chapter one, Paul talks about how God's plan for redemptive love came into being. In Ephesians chapter 2, he talks about how God is not just the God of the Jews, but of the Gentiles too, how we all have access to God and how we ought to be thankful and grateful for what God has done for all of us and how inclusive God is. But but in, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, he he, he shows us that not only should you not think it's just for you, but you shouldn't think it's about you. Because uh, it, it, he says, if we be honest, the only reason we are saved today, the only reason that we have been released and rescued is because we are saved by grace. And somebody ought to thank God for his grace even right now. Thank God that the only reason that I'm set free, that I am no longer bound is because of grace. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor and his unconditional love. Grace is God's unmerited favor and his unconditional love. We, we understand that in order for it to be unmerited, to have merit means merit gives, gives you a sense of something that you have earned, something you've done to be rewarded for your, your, your efforts. And, and when we look at grace, there's nothing that you have done or could do that can warrant God's grace. So it is therefore unmerited favor. Favor is something good that happens to you that you don't even deserve. It doesn't come because of you, but it comes because of the giver. Aren't you glad that God uh, is the giver? He gives, it gives him pleasure to give us favor. It is his pleasure to give us favor. He, he enjoys surprising you with his unmerited favor, but not only is grace God's unmerited favor, but grace is God's unconditional love. Grace means that no matter what you have done in your life, where you have been in your life, it doesn't matter how many times you've fallen and failed. His love is unconditional. Some people can only love you when it is beneficial to them, but, but God loves you so much that it doesn't even matter what you done. He still is able to give you his grace. Paul Zoll, the author, says that grace is love that seeks you out when you have nothing to give in return. Did you hear that? He says, grace is love that seeks you out even when you have nothing to give in return. Grace is love coming at you that has nothing to do with you. Somebody ought to thank God that God is able to give his love to the unlovable. God is able to give you something that you don't even deserve, even when you can't give him nothing in return. Aren't you glad that God's love is not conditional? God's grace on your life is unconditional. Aren't you grateful for the fact that when you look back over your life, you can just simply say his grace is amazing. Yes. Why? Because when I look at my whole life, uh, I, I got to consider how much grace has been on my life. Can you praise God even right now that when you think about your life and where you've come from and what you've done, you ought to thank God that God's grace surpasses where I've been and goes into who I am because God's grace saved me in the midst of who I was. It is God's grace as Romans five and eight says that while that while when you look at how good God's grace is over my life, that God shows his grace, his love toward us that while we were yet in sin, Christ died, listen to this, for the ungodly. While we were still partaking in sin, you, you got to understand, it wasn't that we were trying to get out of it, we were happy in it. 
But God's grace is so amazing that while we were still choosing to sin, Christ died for the ungodly. And, and when, when you look at his grace, uh, there's no place that grace will not go. Oh, my gosh. Can, can I help somebody that even at your lowest point, you ought to thank God that grace was there. Even when you didn't know how you're going to pay your bills. Thank God that grace was there. You've been in the pandemic for 16 months. You ought to thank God for his grace. His grace is amazing. Yes, it is amazing. Somebody ought to thank God. There's no place he will not go and there's no person that grace refuses to reach down towards. There's nobody that's too far gone that grace can't reach them. There's nobody that's too far out there that grace will not get to where they are. Somebody ought to thank God that you don't have the qualifications, but God's grace gave you the position. You, you don't have the intellect or the intelligence, but God's grace gave you what you needed. Somebody ought to thank God that grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Thank God that it is not because of what I've done, but because of Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. The only reason I can celebrate freedom and the only reason I can celebrate being set free is not because of something that happened long ago, but it's in 1895, even though we celebrate, even while we are yet getting ready for Juneteenth, we celebrate how we have been set free as a people. But thank God, even before that, we were already free. Why? Because while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for me. You ought to thank God even right now on a Wednesday night that, that God's grace covers me. It is, it is a one-way love. You can't give God grace back. So you got to thank God that even though it's a one-way type of love, you ought to thank God that he chose to give it to you. Is there anybody that can high five your neighbor virtually and just say, I thank God for his grace. Let me tell you my story. When, when I look at his grace, I, I got to thank God that while while we are benefactors of God's grace, uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 23 says that we have received grace and are encouraged to continue in grace. That's Acts chapter 13, verse 43. But then we are called to testify of God's grace. And that is Acts chapter 20, verse 24. In other words, when you have been a recipient of God's grace, you got to thank God for it. And also you got to tell somebody that his grace is amazing. You got to tell somebody that, that, that you ain't always been where you are. You haven't always had what you have right now. But if it had not been for grace, on my side, if it had not been for grace covering me and if it had not been for all the things that God has shown me, shown himself strong in my life, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Is there anybody that can testify? I thank him because grace is how I got to where I am right now. I thank him that grace is how I, I've obtained all the things I've obtained. But most of all, he says, I want you to understand that you are to celebrate. If you can't celebrate nothing else, celebrate that God's grace is the reason you're saved through faith. It is God's grace that released the relentless and the repentless people that we once were. It is God's grace that set us free and by us believing in him. It is grace through faith that we are saved, not of yourselves. You had nothing to do with it. Tell your neighbor, it, it, it wasn't me. I, I wish I could take credit for it, but it wasn't me. God saved me when I wasn't even looking to be saved. It is the gift of God. Aren't you glad that God gave you the gift of grace and grace is the gift that keeps on giving. It is not of works. There is nothing you can do to deserve it. You can't outwork it. You can't out try to, to do some things on his behalf that's going to warrant the grace that you are given. It is not something that you can boast about. Watch this because you recognize you ain't always been where you are. You recognize that God's grace ain't got nothing to do with you. When you recognize, I don't even and deserve it, you can say it wasn't me. I, I wish I had some witnesses that can testify. It, it wasn't me. I, what, what, what I have right now, it, it wasn't me. The, the car I drive right now, it wasn't me. The job I got right now, it wasn't me. The spouse I got right now, it sure wasn't me. Somebody to praise God, the children that you got, it wasn't because of you. It was God's grace. And if it had not been for the grace of God, we would not be free to live like we do. And you ought to thank God even tonight that while 
We were yet sinners. Christ died for us. That, that's grace exemplified. That, that, that's grace that is unmerited. It is unconditional. It, 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 is, uh, it is undeniable. It is unmistakable. You, you got to thank God that it was amazing grace that, that saved a wretch like me. I once was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You got to praise God that His grace is amazing. And if you're watching today and you, you say, I want to be a part of this, this grace that God has given. I want you to know that today is your day that you can give him your life. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can simply say this prayer. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by your grace. I, I believe that you died on the cross, rose on the third day with all power in your hands. Come into my heart and my life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed this prayer, we're believing by faith that you are now a part of God's family of faith. I want you now to prepare to give as the Lord has blessed you. If you have been blessed by this ministry, blessed by this word, I want you to give the best gift you can give by simply going uh, to our uh, online website, which is www.stjameseastlake.com. The second way is through our mail, which is uh, 7309 or Porto Avenue, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. And the third way is through Cash App, which is dollar sign St. James E.L. Dollar sign St. James E.L. Remember, you can't be God giving no matter how you try. Amen. Uh, this Sunday is Father's Day. We are celebrating the gift of fathers this Sunday. And I want you to make sure you and your father, or if you are a father, I want you to make sure you tune in. If you are a father figure, if you've been there for somebody else, I really want you to tune in this Sunday as we celebrate Father's Day 2021. It's been a whole year and a half that we've been in this pandemic, but thank God for some fathers that have stepped in. Thank God for some people that have been there on your behalf to make sure that you are provided, that you are provided for, and that you are protected. So we thank God for the gift of fathers. Join me this Sunday as we continue the Statutes of Liberty as God has set us free, mind, body, and soul. And we celebrate Father's Day 2021. Also, don't forget, on July 7th, 7-1-1, we are going back into our sanctuary. So make sure St. James and those who are coming, make sure you get excited, you get ready, you spread the word. We're going back in on July 11. 711 is our re-entry into our physical sanctuary, and we're grateful for it. Listen, make sure you share this message. Somebody needs to know that God's grace is still amazing. But more than that, stop trying to take credit for it and just be able to say, it wasn't me. My name is Pastor Richard Holman. Remember, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer.